I was once asked to hit nitroglycerine or a sample of nitroglycerine with a hammer. They poured some out on a brick, gave me the hammer, said, stroke it gently. And I did. And it went off with one hell of a bang. So today I'm going to talk about a compound. Recently we did one on the Nobel Prize and Alfred Nobel made his money from dynamite. So I thought we'd do one on dynamite. And nitroglycerin here uh, is the active ingredient, the explosive in dynamite. It comes from glycerol, which is a natural uh, compound. You just nitrate it and you get nitroglycerin, which is a kind of oily, heavy substance. But it was found very quickly uh, that it is very explosive. And in fact, it's dangerous to make. Alfred Nobel's uh, genius was to absorb it onto so-called dead earth. And what you would do is he found that if you put the dead earth on a sheet of paper, and then you rolled that paper up like a, an arctic roll, then it became a nice stick and you could transport these sticks. And because it was absorbed onto that dead earth, it gave a bit of shock resistance. So he, he, he tamed it essentially by putting it into this uh, uh, stick and calling it dynamite. And dynamite, which you normally get in these sort of sausage-shaped sticks, is really very stable. You can throw it on a fire and it'll just burn. And you need to use a detonator, which produces a real shock wave, which then travels down the stick, forcing the explosion to take place. I was once given a set of photographs which showed how this explosion travels down the stick. In one ten thousandth of a second, it's all over. And it really looks very dramatic. If you're clever, you can focus the shock from an explosion, rather like you can focus light with a lens. And then you can do some really dramatic things. So if you look at this piece of metal here, it's really quite thick. And I was shown what happens when you take 100 grams, that's not really very much, not much more than this bar of chocolate, a small bar of chocolate, the sort you eat for lunch. If you use that with a shape charge, set it off here, you can make a hole right through it. You can see here, my pencil will go right through. And you can see here, there's the blast marks. You can even still see 30 years on from when this was done, a few traces of the copper casing of the detonator. And on the other side, you can see where the explosion burst out. So that was a great explosive. And it, it, as, at the onset of the First World War, this was being used a lot in mines and also in bombs. But the problem with this compound is nitroglycerin. It explodes very quickly. So if you are trying to uh, explode a bomb and destroy a building, say. Uh, this, when it hits the outside of the building, will immediately explode. What you really want is to get slightly inside the wall before you explode, because then you're going to blow the wall apart much more effectively. So another Nobel Prize winner, uh, Bader, uh, invented this compound. And it was the Germans who invented this uh, in the early 1900s. And you'll know it as TNT. So made famous by uh, cartoons and Acme. Uh, TNT is trinitrotoluene. So these are nitro groups here. This blue is nitrogen, the red is oxygen. And the clever thing with both uh, nitroglycerin and TNT is that in order to burn, to make carbon dioxide and nitrogen, normally when we set light to things, we need oxygen from the air to enable that to burn. These have enough oxygens in here to make all these carbons turn into carbon dioxide. That gas expands and that's what makes the, the explosion. TNT was found to have a little initiation period. It's probably not quite as explosive uh, in, in absolute power terms as uh, the nitroglycerine, but the great thing about this molecule was that it would there would be a, a tiny delay a fraction of a second delay before it exploded upon impact, which meant that the missile could get partway through the bunker 
before it exploded and it created a lot more damage. The Mark 25 torpedo tube is severely damaged. When it detonates, the carbon reacts with, and hydrogen react with the oxygen to make water and carbon dioxide. And the nitrogen atoms combine to make N2. N2 has one of the strongest bonds between any two atoms. And it's a triple bond between nitrogen and forming this bond releases a lot of heat. So does the combination of carbon with oxygen and hydrogen with oxygen. So in effect, you get instantaneous burning. They are all gases. The gases expand. This is a liquid, so it's dense. Gases want to expand. They're going to be very hot, remember, so they're going to want to expand. And that is actually the explosion. It's that expansion and generation of gas in a confined space that wants to be much, much bigger. I work here in Nottingham, and Nottingham has a special connection with TNT, or more precisely, a suburb of Nottingham called Chilwell. Because during the First World War, Chilwell had the main depot, the main factory, where they filled the shells that were taken to the Western Front for all the guns. TNT is bright yellow, and the young women who worked filling the shells started absorbing it in their skin and were known as the Chilwell Canaries because their skin was bright yellow. And there's a book was recently published about these women working in the shell factory called The Canary Girls of Chilwell. And on the 1st of July, 1918, there was an enormous explosion in the ammonium nitrate and TNT works. Nobody to this day knows quite why it happened, but you can see the whole place was wrecked. Windows miles away were broken by the shockwave from the explosion, and a large number of people, probably more than 200, were killed. There's still a monument to these people who died. But at the time, it was kept quite secret because it was in the middle of the war. And within a few days, production had restarted and they started filling the shells. Nitro compounds are useful because they call, cause dilation of blood vessels. So they're useful to give to people that have high blood pressure, which puts a strain on their hearts because it expands the blood vessels and the hearts can pump more easily. In fact, it's said that people who worked in nitroglycerin plants used to have to take samples of nitroglycerin on holiday with them to sniff so that their blood vessels didn't contract too much when they were on holiday. And our famous lecturer from Nottingham, B.D. Shaw, who used to give lectures on explosives, most interestingly, was treated for many years with nitroglycerin. And it just seems quite amusing to me that an explosive specialist had his life prolonged by nitroglycerin treatment.